What's going on guys? It's your boy Death here, or Dylan, and uh, yeah, today I have pre-recorded a shit ton of footage from Fallout 4 concerning the Nick Valentine quest. And uh, <clears throat> this should be like the first video uploaded in uh, two or three weeks time, so my apologies for that. I'll upload a video explaining why that I've recorded over the past month, so... Yeah, should be good. Um, as you can tell, right when I've been trying to get back into recording, I got sick. I always tend to get sick at the beginning of every school year, and that pisses me off. But there isn't much I can do about it, so hopefully you guys enjoy this bit of footage. And yeah, see you in the, see you in the next one. Bye. Hey. Go ahead. Uh, any chance you got a second now? Of course, Nick. What's up? I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but, uh, well, I know I can trust you at this point. For as long as I can remember, I've been getting these, uh, flashes. Memories of places I've never been. Things I've never seen. Memories of Nick's. They're not bad. They're just, um, they're just this inescapable reminder that I'm not the person I think I am. That I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine, pretending to be human. You think, you feel. You're more than pretending, Nick. Yeah, nice of you to say, but your kind don't usually have to deal with someone else's whole life trapped inside their skulls. Don't get me wrong, I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop, a guy with good instincts and a good heart. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. Why I get to live cushy in Diamond City and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but my entire life I owe to Nick. Everything that makes me who I am, my judgment, my speech, Hell, even my name. They're his. And I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them, without them, I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. You've already built a life for yourself, Nick. You've got the agency, a home, friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I... I'm just going to need some time to think on this. I appreciate you hearing me out. You're a, you're a real good friend. Thanks. Hey, I'm li You know, there is this chunk of Nick Valentine history I've been hoping to put a bow on for a while now. I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. Sure thing. What's the case? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people, but he knew the end was coming. So he sealed himself inside a personal shelter, located underneath a sub shop he used as a headquarters. Eddie Winter was from my time. Pfft, real scumbag. The story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. Jeez, you've really done your homework on this guy. I have. I uncovered a doozy. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. 
ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him, so that never happens. You in? I don't get it, Nick. Why kill Eddie Winter, even if he is still alive? This sounds like some kind of vendetta. No, I've got memories of a, of a girl. My girl. They're not really my memories, and I know that. They're Nick's. But the girl, she was real. She was beautiful and innocent, and Winter killed her. Now he's got to pay the price. So, knowing that, are you in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. You're a good man. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, including one of Winter's that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. My gut tells me the Boston Police Evidence Terminals are the key to cracking this one. It's probably worth paying a visit to any of the departments you might have stumbled across. Message to Johnny Montrano. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You fat, lazy piece of shit. I knew. I knew this arrangement was too good to be true. Let's join forces with the North End, huh? Bury the hatchet? Work mutually against a common enemy? Well, you put the nail in that coffin, huh, boyo? What did you have to do, Johnny? Huh? What was your job? Sit in your car, on the corner. Keep your eyes open. If you see a uniform, you get out. Walk down the street, knock on the door, and let the fellas know there's trouble coming. Easy as pie, right? I could have got a nine-year-old from the projects to do it, but no. In the interest of Irish-Italian relations, I give the job to you. So what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. You sit on your fat ass dribbling cannoli cream onto your third chin. You watch. You watch the uniform blow months of planning, all in two minutes. Congratulations, Johnny. You got me. You and your pal sure put the screws to old Eddie Winter. You should tell this funny story to your little girl when you tuck her in at night. In that corner bedroom, upstairs, pink wallpaper, little house on Prince Street. <laughs> Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Robert Cooper. You did good, Bobby. The wife and girl won't be saying anything. <laughs> no worries. Hell, once those fat life insurance checks start rolling in, <laughs> Mrs. Montrano will wish her fat slob of a husband had eaten that bullet five years ago. As for what happens next, up to you. Beach, sub shop, car yard, doesn't matter where he ends up, I don't give a shit. I just want him in the ground. So, long as Johnny Sr. never finds out what happened to his little meatball, 
We're set. Eddie Winter, signing off. My esteemed Mr. Strelnikov, I know someone of your profession values discretion above all else. But I have to honestly say, screw that. I mean, come on. One bullet, halfway across town, and you blew Ron Trevio's head clean off. You, sir, are an artist. Are all the assassins from Russia as good as you? I seriously doubt it. But listen. Your secret's safe with me. Eddie Winter, signing off. Let's meet. Just the two of us. Talk it all out. You name the
the time and place. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Charlotte Wen. My dear Miss Wen, I hope you're well. After our little joint venture this past May, you should be. If memory serves correctly, that pallet of buff out earned you a small fortune and Wu Li eight years in a state correctional facility. So I got to thinking, why not do it again? We both love the same things. Money and destroying people who get in our way. Together, we'll outmaneuver them all. Boston will be ours for the taking. Let them play checkers. We'll play chess. Eddie Winter, signing off.
Rodrigo Palomar. Okay, my friend. I thought about it. And I've reached a decision on the Fallon's job. Your cut is exactly what you deserve. Zero dollars. Zilch. You heard me right. You get nothing. Yes, you cracked the safe. And yes, we got the diamonds. But you also tripped the alarm. Mackie got pinched, and that's entirely your fault. Now, when he gets out, Mackie's gonna want your head on a platter. I'm gonna give him your share instead. I see you're getting off easy. Eddie Winter, signing off. Yes. You did get one thing right, though. Safety Inspector Alice Lansky was killed. You'll never find her. Because there's nothing left. Message to Buster Conley. Nice piece you did on the monorail construction project. Heaven's Highway? Devil's Doing? Huh, cute. But I think you give organized crime too much credit. The various Boston families coming together to fund a public works project? Huh, please. Clearly you never sat down at dinner with these guys. They can barely agree on an appetizer. And ain't nobody jumping to pick up the check. The bosses had their hands in the honeypot, sure but nowhere near the level you were suggesting. You did get one thing right, though. Safety Inspector Alice Lansky was killed. They'll never find her, because there's nothing left. After he bashed her brains in with one of those giant wrenches, Vinny the Crackers Venucci dissolved her body in a barrel of hydrochloric acid. So write your follow-up. Then feel free to tell the cops the murder weapon is hanging on the wall in Venucci's garage on 4 Charter Street. Eddie Winter, signing off.
Pazinski. Dinner tonight. Me, you, and Arthur Black. Reservations of uh, seven at the Cornerstone Grill. Don't worry. I'll make sure Arthur's on his best behavior. No stabbing the waiter for a fucked up drink order, like what happened in Charlestown. Even though the prick deserved it. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off.
Kozinski. Time to start thinking about a vacation. How does six weeks in Ireland sound to you? Dublin, Galway Bay, Waterford. Maybe a week in that little bed and breakfast in Kilkenny. And don't worry, we don't have to take my cousin Stephen with us. Let him get out of the country on his own. I told him to threaten that cop. Not blast him in the face with a shotgun. He can rot in that abandoned fishery down in Union Wharf for all I care. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off. Nothing's getting by me, sir. Hi. Area secured, General.
Got it. Message to Robert Cooper. Bobby, we discussed this. You hooking up with your stepsister is your own friggin' business. But you talk in your sleep. Look, maybe you babble about baseball or sing show tunes. Or could be you chat about those three bodies Colin O'Malley dumped in the sand trap of Arlington Greens. You want to take that chance? I know I don't. Sorry, Robert. The girls gotta go. Eddie Winter, signing off. Heads up. No. So, you got something for me? Maybe a pocket full of tapes belonging to an old ghoul? Finally got them all. Here. No fooling. Wow. That's some real solid detective work. They're older than dirt, but they've got Eddie's paw prints all over them. These are the real deal. And they've still got the code pieces in them. Let me run them through the old processor. Got it. One, nine, five, three, seven, two, eight, four, zero, six. That old thug's holed up in Andrews Station. Now, let's go bring down Eddie Winter.
Let's not keep Eddie waiting. Finally time for Eddie Winter to get his due.
Nick. I never would have made it this far without you. Sure. One nine five three seven two eight four zero six. The fuck? Who the fuck are you? I'm the last human you're ever gonna lay eyes on. Huh. Oh boy, yo. If I had a saw buck for every time somebody said that to me. But I ain't dead yet, am I? Just how the fuck did you get... No. No way. Not after all this time. Don't tell me you actually cracked my code. In the hollow tapes? <laughs> well, hey. It's only been, what? 200 years? <laughs> well, look. I'm not sure what you thought you'd find. Gold, jewels, the secrets of the universe. But you get me. One guy, a ghoul, I guess you'd call me. Just living, surviving, and what I got, you can't have. That code? <laughs> it was a joke. I just wanted to prove how dumb those feds were. Turns out, pretty dumb. So take your asses someplace else. I'm not going anywhere until I get what I came for. Yeah? And what's that? And who are you, huh? You look kind of familiar. But what are you, some kind of robot? Is that what it's like out there now? A world of robot overlords? I knew it. The name's Valentine. Nick Valentine. Remember me? Valentine? The cop? Is that who you're supposed to be? Sorry, pal, but you ain't Nick Valentine. You're just some kind of, uh, machine. You killed my fiance, Jennifer Lance. There's some crimes even you can't get away with, Winter. Your fiance? You mean Valentine's fiance. Pretty girl. A shame what happened to her. But hey, you? Or, you know, the real Valentine? He should have backed off when he had the chance. But what gives, Robot Man? Why do you even care? Some girl gets whacked 200 years ago, and you come into my home acting like a hot guy? Christ, look at you. You're not even alive. Then I guess I'm in good company. So long, pal. No. Yeah. Hey, Valentine. We're done here. There's one more thing I've got to do. I, I wouldn't mind the company if you wanted to tag along. Mm hmm?
This is it. In this spot, 200 years ago, one of Eddie's boys put a bullet in Jenny Land's back. Now Eddie's as dead as Jenny. And Nick. I... I'm at a loss. I, I just need some time to process all this. You mind if we get out of here? Yeah, that is if you... Still interested in traveling together. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted some time on your own after all this. Of course. Let's do it. Well, glad to hear it. Come on, let's get out of here. And hey, thanks. Heads up. What's the do something for you? Your thoughts? The Brotherhood may have been zealots. But did they deserve this? I wanted to make sure things were okay between you and me. What can I say? I like your style. You want to help people out here. That's the kind of person I want to travel with. That's all. Suit yourself. 